Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with factoring. So we have to find a factored expression for this shaded area over here. So notice that this particular shape, we have a larger square. We know it's a square because each side over here has this double line symbol symbolizing or meaning that the length of each side is the same, which would make it a square. And then we have this smaller square over here. And then notice that each side has this single line going through it, meaning that each of these sides also have the same length. And the larger square, it has a length of 3x plus 1, while the smaller square here has a length of x minus 4. So what we have to do is we have to find the area, the shaded area, in between the squares. And so what we can do, just in general, is we can take the larger area, which would also include this area over here, so all of this inside the larger square, and then we could subtract the smaller area of the smaller square. And the difference between those is gonna give us that shaded area. So let's put here just in words, the large area minus the small area. Now, the area of a square in general, what is it? It's just the length times the length, right? It's length times width, but because the length and the width are the same, it's just length times length, or sometimes you'll see S for side, and it's just the side squared. And so the large area here is gonna be 3x plus one times 3x plus one, or 3x plus one squared, minus the small area is gonna be x minus four times x minus four, or x minus four squared. Now we can't leave it like this. This has to be fully factored. And so factoring this, there's actually two different ways to do it. Uh, my preferred way, so let me show you the two different ways. So here would be method one, is to recognize that you're dealing with a difference of squares here. Remember a difference of squares, it's a squared minus b squared. And what is that gonna be? Well, it's gonna be a minus b, a plus b, like that. Let's actually uh, do this further out over here so we have room for the other method. So this is method one here, recognizing you're dealing with a difference of squares, but it's not just a and b, it's not just variables, it's actual full expressions that are being squared. But nevertheless, it's a difference of squares here. And we know that a difference of squares, it's a minus b times a plus b, like that. And so taking this, rewriting it just below this, notice that in this case, basically it's like this a is the three x plus one, and then the b value, it's like this x minus four, right? Because you could even put this a and this b in brackets like that. And so if the a is three x plus one, the b is x minus four, then you just have to take these expressions for a and b respectively, put them in the formula. So we would end up with a, which is three x plus one, be careful here, minus the b value, but the b value is an expression, so you gotta put that in brackets. That's probably the biggest trick right there. You don't just wanna write minus x minus four without brackets, you're subtracting that whole thing, right? A minus B, and K. in fact, you could even put both in brackets like that if it makes you feel more comfortable. And then this bracket here, you could just get rid of it because there's nothing in front. And then we'll have A plus B, so it'll be three X plus one, which is the A value plus the B value of X minus four. Here, the bracket is not as mandatory, quote unquote, because there's just a plus one in front, but here it is, so we gotta distribute that minus one inside that bracket. So we'd end up with three X plus one, minus X plus four, three X, let's just get rid of the brackets here. And then just collecting like terms in the brackets, three X minus X gives us two X plus one plus four, that would give us plus five, three X plus X would give us four X, one minus four would give us minus three, like that. And then notice you can't factor this any further. You can't take anything out of that bracket, can't take anything out of that. So that right there is the final answer for this particular question. This is probably the more popular method to do it. Now the other method, 
probably not going to have room. You know what? I'm just going to erase this first method. All right, let's actually write the answer though, just so we see if the second method we do, we're going to end up with the same thing. So the, um, the second method, the less popular method, uh, also the longer method, this is not the way I would do it, is you expand everything and then just factor whatever's remaining. So if we expand everything, we'll have 3x plus 1 times 3x plus 1 minus x minus 4 times x minus 4, like that. So we'll foil these brackets out, multiplying these two brackets, you'd end up with 9x squared plus 6x. It'll be 3x plus 3x, but then that will net out to 6x, then we'll have plus 1, minus these two brackets, when you multiply them out, you'll have x squared minus 8x plus 16. You'd end up with minus 4x minus 4x in the middle, but that's going to net out to negative 8x. Then you distribute into that bracket. So you got minus x squared plus 8x minus 16. And then like terms, 8x squared, um, those go away. 6x plus 8x would give us 14x. And then we'll have 1 minus 16, which will give us, give me a sec here, negative 15, like that. And then this is expanded, then you got to factor in this, right? And hopefully this will factor into that. And just checking it, just looking at it here, minus 15x plus 8x, no. Um, sorry, 20x. Yeah, it looks like it's going to work out anyway. But see how much longer it is. So we got to expand first, get to this part, and then we got to factor this over here. So we'll have 8x squared plus 14x minus 15, like that. Um, can't take anything out of here. The A value is 8, the B value is 14, the C value is negative 15. So then the AC value would be 8 times negative 15, which would give us negative 120, like that. And so then what we got to do is we got to find two numbers that multiply to negative 120 and then add up uh, to 14, right? Yes, add up to that B value of 14, like that. And then if you try some numbers out, it's basically going to be 20 and negative 6. 20, negative 6. 20 times negative 6 is negative 120. 20 plus negative 6 is like 20 minus 6, which will give us positive 14. So then we decompose. From these two, we could take out, what, a 4x? And we'd be left with 2x plus 5. Then from these two, we could take out a minus 3 and we'd be left with 2x plus 5 as well, right? Negative 6x divided by negative 3 is 2x, negative 15 divided by negative 3 is positive 5. Then we could take out the bracket, 2x plus 5, and we'd be left with 4x minus 3 like that, right? So the exact same solution, right? So a much longer way, I think it's better to recognize here at this point you're dealing with a difference of squares, use the formula, and you end up with your expression.